Lily Rowe is a 35-year-old woman with renal carcinoma and bone metastases. She's come to see her GP, Dr. Tanner, about increasing pain. Hi, Lily. Hi. Nice to see you. And how can I help you today? It's the pain. It's just getting really bad. And it's the pain in my uh, back and the hips. I, just, I don't know if I can take it anymore. Mm, sorry to hear that. Can you describe the pain? Yeah, I get um, two types of pain. So the, there's a, like a really dull ache, um, which is all right, but it's the sharp pain that's really terrible. I can't bear that one. And when do you get the ache? The ache I get in the mornings and in the evenings, um, generally a couple of hours before the next dose, is, next dose of painkillers is due. And how long does that last? Um, three or four hours. Quite a long time, really. And what about the sharp pain? The sharp pain I get when I'm walking, um, generally, so when I'm moving around, but sometimes it just comes on for no reason. And you haven't had any injuries, or and you're okay walking? No, I haven't had any injuries. Um, walking is fine, except when I have the pain, and then it's really difficult, because it just hurts. Yeah. And how long does that pain last? The sharp pain? Uh, generally about half an hour, but it's coming on like three or four times a day now. Okay. In these cases, a full pain assessment is important, including a detailed history and examination, looking especially for any red flag symptoms. This helps elicit clues on etiology, including timings, exacerbating factors, and response to therapies. Okay, Lily, I think it seems like you've got a combination of end of dose failure pain as well as some breakthrough pain. What's that? So the end of dose failure pain is very simply when the medication isn't lasting until your next dose. And the breakthrough pain is a bit different. It's an episode on, of pain on top of your normal background pain. OK, I guess that makes sense. Breakthrough cancer pain can be defined as transient or episodic pain exacerbations in someone with otherwise well-controlled background pain. It requires careful assessment, including thorough investigation of any red flag symptoms. It is usually severe, short in duration, and quick in onset. It can have severe psychosocial effects and is more common amongst patients with advanced disease. End of dose failure pain, on the other hand, is an increase in pain levels before the next analgesic dose is due. This is not generally considered to be breakthrough pain. Breakthrough pain is as varied as the cancer pain itself, and can have a number of etiologies. Clinically, it can happen sporadically with no apparent trigger, as a result of voluntary actions, such as movement, involuntary actions like coughing, or indeed because of medical interventions, perhaps as simple as changing a dressing. Okay, Lily, well, the first step is to see what you're taking for your pain. Um, can you remind me what you're taking? Yeah, um, I'm taking the 30 milligrams of the long-acting um, oxycodone, that's twice a day. Mm -hmm. um, and then the short acting one, the 10 milligrams, I take maybe six or seven times a day. And I'm taking the paracetamol as well. OK, good. And I remember the oncology team started you on a bisphosphonate. Are you still taking that? Yes, I am, yeah. OK. Well, I think the first thing to do is to increase your uh, long acting oxycodone to 60 milligrams twice a day. And I think that will help um, get your background pain more under control. 60 milligrams twice a day, okay. Then, I think we need to increase your short-acting um, dose to an equivalent of what you would get in four hours on the new regime. So that means that the immediate release tablets will now be up to 20 milligrams. Okay, well, anything to get this pain sorted out. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, do you need a repeat prescription? Yeah, I do, actually, yeah. Okay. We'll send that through to the chemist. Um, but really important, don't forget to take your laxatives. Yeah, I'll take those. One solution to breakthrough pain is to address the cause of the pain. This can be done using surgical or radiological interventions or by chemotherapy. Pharmacologically, the first step is to titrate the opioid analgesics. This is highly effective, but the ability to increase the opioid may be limited by side effects. If side effects are limiting, other drugs can be added to overcome this, such as a combination of antiemetics or laxatives. Additionally, psychostimulants, such as methylphenidate, can sometimes be used to counteract opioid-related sedation. 
Another possibility is to try switching opioid analgesics or changing the route of administration. This may particularly be effective for movement-induced pain. The addition of etiology-appropriate adjuvant analgesics, like anticonvulsants or tricyclic antidepressants for neuropathic pain, can also be effective. In Lily's case, the use of bisphosphonates was an effective adjuvant for her metastatic bone pain. Emma, the community specialist pain nurse, makes a call to Lily. Hello? Oh, hi, Lily. This is Emma, the pain nurse. Oh, hi. Uh, I've been asked by Dr. Tanner to ring you about your pain. How's your pain? Um, yeah, well, the um, achy pain that I'm getting in the morning and the evening, that's much better. But the sharp pain, that, I mean, that's still, that, I'm still getting that when I move around. OK, well, I'm sorry to hear that. And how's your rescue medication helping with that? That's the short-release oxycodone. Um, I've been taking it when I get the pain, but I don't think it really makes much difference. Maybe it just takes too long to work. I don't know, really. OK, and how long is the sharp pain lasting for, Lily? Um, about half an hour. Hmm. In that case, we might need to change that medication because sometimes even the short-acting oxycodone takes about half an hour to act, so it might be a bit slow-acting for you in this case. Yeah, I guess that makes a lot of sense. Short-acting analgesia should be taken on an as-required basis in proportion to the regular dosage. European Association for Palliative Care guidelines recommend using a dose of immediate-release opioid for breakthrough pain equivalent to four hours of the background dose. Breakthrough medication should either be taken when the pain arises or can also be taken in advance of any predictable triggers. Ultimately, breakthrough agents should also be chosen on a careful assessment of how quickly the patient's pain comes on and how long it lasts. If breakthrough ep episodes can be predicted in advance or usually last more than an hour, short-acting opioids may be a good choice as rescue medication. This includes immediate release preparations of oral morphine or oxycodone. They generally take 20 to 30 minutes to work and have their peak effects after 60 to 90 minutes, with continuing effects for 3 to 6 hours. If the patient is in hospital or a hospice, intravenous or subcutaneous methods can be used to give rapid onset of analgesia within 5 to 10 minutes, but can still be limited by their continuing effects over 3 to 6 hours. Other routes can be used to get quick yet shorter lasting analgesic action. This family of rapid onset opioids include fentanyl and various specialty forms, sublingual, buccal, nasal sprays, films and lozenges. Lily returns for her follow-up visit with Dr Tanner after her change of medication to rapid-onset sublingual fentanyl last All week, right, as per advice of the pain team. Lily, great to see you again. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. <laughs> All right, and you've got a smile on your face, so the news could be... Could yeah, be great news, actually. I feel a lot better. Um, the um, the long-acting oxycodone that you've given me, mm -hmm. that's really helped with the, um, the dull ache. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking to Emma, the pain nurse on the phone, with the, she gave me the under the tongue medication mm -hmm. for when I get the short, um, the sharp pain. And actually, if I take it as soon as the pain comes on, it goes away in about five minutes. So yeah, it's all good. That's fantastic news, yeah. Um, have you had any problems with any constipation, mm -hmm. sleepiness or nausea? Yeah, um, at the beginning I was a bit tired. Um, I think that's probably the increased dose of oxycontin that you gave me. Um, but um, now I think I'm back to my normal self now. So yeah, I'm quite happy, yeah. Okay, good. Are you remembering to still take your laxatives? Yeah, I'm taking the laxatives. Um, it's working, so I, I'll just, yeah, I'll just carry on with those, yeah. Okay. Well, look, that, that's all really, really good news. Um, if you want to make an appointment to see me again in a month's time, that you're more than welcome to do that, or sooner, uh, should anything change, of course. OK, great. Thank okay. you very much, Doctor. Thanks. You're welcome. Breakthrough cancer pain is transient pain exacerbations in someone with well-controlled background pain. Take a careful pain history and thoroughly examine patients to elicit any relevant etiology and exclude complications. The first treatment step is to titrate the background opioid analgesics as tolerated and to add appropriate adjuvant drugs. Consider switching opioid or route of administration if needed. Short-acting analgesia should be taken on an as-required basis 
in proportion to the modified release dosage. The agent should be chosen based on careful assessment of the temporal characteristics of the patient's pain.